he just played his rook to e8, um, his a rook to e8, magnifying pressure down here and trying to keep his position aggressive. He's threatening, by the way, to checkmate me along this line in play. Oops. Um, okay, if I'm if it were his move here, he would have this checkmate threat of rook to e1 check. And since my king is forced on to stay on the back row thanks to this queen, I would have to take with my rook. He would take with his other rook and deliver checkmate. So that's what he's threatening with this rook move. And I have to do something about that. So I'm up the pawn. I'm suddenly up the pawn. But I still have some defending to do. So the move I play is rook h to d6. And the reason is that now, if black plays his rook to e1 for check, I can escape my king to d2 because this rook on d6 is blocking the line. So it's not checkmate anymore. So my opponent does this, and I pull my king away. And now he exchanges rooks, and I take back with the queen because this rook's pinned, it can't move. And now, after black plays bishop to d4, and I play queen to d4, so I maintain my defense of this rook, I threaten that bishop, black plays rook d8. So this is kind of a pretty simple distraction tactic. If my queen takes his bishop, he takes my rook, and he comes out ahead material. So obviously I can't do that. And so I respond with a distraction tactic of my own. Here I play knight to b7. And here, if he takes my knight, I take his rook. Now, I mean, these tactics are a little bit transparent. So of course, my opponent doesn't, doesn't oblige me there. He plays the best move in the position, which is rook to d7. And now, simplifications ensue. So for white, the best move available, which I found, was queen takes g4. So now I take the bishop. He takes the rook. And we basically exchange off our rooks and minor pieces. It's check. I pull my king back. And in this position, it's a queen and pawn zen game. I'm up a pawn. I don't really know very much about how to play queen and pawn endgames, and the general principle about queen and pawn endgames that I have heard is that you usually need more than one pawn's advantage to secure any more than a draw out of it. So in this position, I offered the draw, and my opponent accepted. So maybe I'm winning with this extra pawn, but considering I played this sacrifice with the idea of getting a draw out of the position, I didn't really mind having a draw as the end result, even up this pawn. So that's how that game ended. Game's a draw. Really interesting closeout to it, though, I thought. And I hope you enjoyed um, watching this kind of bizarre situation unfold. This has been Image. Thanks very much for watching. Oops. Have a nice day. Signing out.